What if everything we believed about cars, how they're powered, manufactured, and maintained, was about to be turned upside down? In a quiet neighborhood in Zimbabwe, far from Silicon Valley, or the showrooms of German auto giants, an inventor named Maxwell Chikumbuzo has reportedly created something that challenges the very core of the modern automotive and energy industries, a self-powered car, not hybrid, not electric, but a vehicle that runs entirely on invisible radio frequencies, with no gasoline, no lithium-ion batteries, and no need for charging stations. This isn't just another EV story. If true, it's a technology that could collapse the battery industry, disrupt global oil markets, and render Tesla's supercharging network completely irrelevant. While the world obsesses over electric cars, Africa may have just invented something beyond electricity itself. And this is only part of a bigger, quieter movement reshaping Africa, one that could make the continent a surprising leader in automotive innovation, clean energy, and infrastructure-free mobility. This is the story of how Africa is rewriting the rules of transportation and why the world should be paying attention. Maxwell Chikumbuzo's invention has raised eyebrows globally for one powerful reason. It claims to run indefinitely using only ambient radio frequency energy. That means it captures energy from the environment, like TV signals, Wi-Fi, and other radio waves, and converts it into power for propulsion. The technology at the core of this system is something Maxwell calls the Greener Power Machine, GPMs, which reportedly can harness non-ionizing radiation and transform it into usable electrical energy. Unlike solar or wind, it doesn't depend on weather. Unlike lithium batteries, it doesn't degrade or require mining. And unlike gasoline, it doesn't pollute. This is more than a concept on paper. Maxwell has built working prototypes, including not just cars, but also helicopters, generators, and home systems that utilize this same technology. What makes this even more remarkable is the context. Zimbabwe suffers from frequent power outages, limited access to new technologies, and an economy under severe pressure. Yet, against all odds, Maxwell developed a clean energy vehicle with zero emissions, zero charging downtime, and potentially unlimited range. The implications are massive. If this tech scales up, it could undermine everything Tesla has built, from its gigafactories to its battery supply chains, and challenge the very idea of centralized energy distribution. While Western headlines are dominated by Tesla's production delays or the latest self-driving beta update, Africa has been quietly building a different kind of automotive revolution, one that prioritizes resilience over luxury, affordability over flash, and practicality over hype. Morocco, for instance, has emerged as a leading car manufacturing hub, producing over 400,000 vehicles in 2023. These are not niche local cars. They are exported to Europe, meeting international standards for quality and safety. Morocco's auto industry is now one of the fastest growing in the region, thanks to deep partnerships with global brands like Renault and Stellantis. South Africa has also established itself as a major player in the automotive sector. It employs more than 100,000 people and contributes over 4% to the national GDP. This includes vehicle manufacturing, parts production, and export industries, all of which are gaining momentum. Elsewhere on the continent, Ghana and Nigeria are making strides in developing indigenous vehicles specifically designed for African conditions. Brands like Kantanka in Ghana and Inasan in Nigeria are producing cars that are durable, cost-effective, and easy to maintain, ideal for markets with limited infrastructure and rough terrain. These cars aren't competing on cutting-edge software or autonomous driving. They're built to be functional, multi-purpose, and fixable with basic tools, qualities often missing in luxury EVs like Teslas, which require specialized parts, software updates, and costly maintenance. While the Western world races toward complexity, Africa is building for simplicity, efficiency, and sustainability. Electric vehicles need charging. But what happens when your region doesn't have a reliable power grid? That's the challenge across much of sub-Saharan Africa. But instead of being a limitation, it's becoming a catalyst for innovation. 
Many African countries are leapfrogging traditional infrastructure entirely, developing off-grid energy solutions that don't rely on fossil fuels or even national power grids. In Kenya, for example, geothermal energy, sourced from the Earth's natural heat, is powering new EV charging stations. This provides a clean, renewable power source that doesn't depend on coal or diesel. In Uganda, local innovators have created solar-powered electric buses designed for urban mass transit. These buses can be charged during the day and run routes without ever needing to connect to a conventional grid. And in Zimbabwe, Maxwell's radio frequency-powered car takes things a step further. No grid, no plug, no fuel, just airwaves. This isn't just innovation, it's independence. By bypassing the need for centralized power systems, African countries are showing that clean, reliable mobility is possible without billion-dollar infrastructure projects. Let's return to Morocco, because its rise as an automotive powerhouse is no accident. It's the result of long-term investment in infrastructure, government support, and strategic alliances with major international car makers. Factories in cities like Tangier and Casablanca now produce cars and components at a scale and quality that rivals parts of Europe. These vehicles are not only affordable, but also well-suited to export, especially to nearby European countries. Meanwhile, Tesla, while dominant in markets like the US and China, struggles to gain traction in Africa. Its vehicles are often too expensive, too delicate, and too reliant on advanced charging infrastructure to be viable in many African regions. Simply put, Tesla didn't build for Africa, but Africa is now building for the world. And as more consumers in emerging markets demand rugged, adaptable, and low-maintenance vehicles, Morocco's auto industry is perfectly positioned to meet that demand. Today's EV revolution is powered by lithium-ion batteries, which depend on minerals like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. These are expensive, difficult to mine, and often tied to exploitative labor practices and environmental destruction. Africa itself is a major source of these materials, particularly cobalt from the Democratic Republic of Congo. But rather than just supplying raw materials to the West, African innovators are beginning to develop technologies that eliminate the need for these minerals entirely. If vehicles like Maxwell Chikumbutso's become viable at scale, the entire battery economy could be disrupted. No more need for lithium, no more cobalt, no more dependence on extractive, unsustainable practices. It's no surprise that China is already investing in these developments, recognizing the strategic value of a post-battery world. By partnering with African startups and funding research, China is positioning itself to dominate the next phase of clean transportation, not by perfecting batteries, but by eliminating them. This shift isn't theoretical, it's already unfolding. Right now, we're witnessing a silent but seismic transformation that's redrawing the global automotive map. And like every great disruption, it's creating clear winners and unmistakable losers. For years, Tesla's supercharger network was its secret weapon, a sprawling infrastructure that gave it an edge over competitors and cemented its dominance in the electric vehicle space. But in a world where cars can power themselves without being plugged in or charged, that once massive advantage starts to look like a limitation. The billions poured into chargers, software updates, and lithium battery production could soon become stranded investments in a world moving toward decentralized, self-generating energy systems. Western automakers, rooted in legacy systems and built around centralized manufacturing, service centers, and complex global supply chains now find themselves outpaced. Their vehicles are designed for markets with strong infrastructure, paved roads, high-speed internet, dealership networks, and consistent energy supply. But in many emerging markets, especially across Africa, these assumptions don't hold, and the vehicles being built in Africa, durable, modular, energy flexible, are specifically engineered to thrive in environments where traditional cars would break down. Meanwhile, China is playing a different game altogether. With an eye on the long term, it's been quietly forming strategic partnerships across the African continent, funding infrastructure projects, investing in local innovators, and securing access to both resources and talent. 
While the West debates the next update to its EV software, China is positioning itself to lead the next industrial revolution, not by controlling the battery supply chain, but by embracing technologies that could eliminate the need for batteries altogether. And then there's Africa, which for the first time isn't just reacting to global trends, it's setting them. From Zimbabwe to Morocco, from Kenya to Ghana, African engineers, entrepreneurs, and governments are pioneering models of transportation and energy that are not only sustainable, but globally scalable. The power dynamics are shifting rapidly. This is no longer a game of catching up to the West. It's about building a new playbook from the ground up, one that prioritizes resilience, independence, and innovation born out of necessity. Africa isn't just participating in the global auto economy anymore. It's redefining it. We are witnessing the emergence of a future that doesn't depend on gasoline, coal, or even electricity as we know it. Across the continent, innovators are embracing solar energy, biofuels, geothermal power, and radio wave technology to power vehicles and homes. This isn't about catching up with the West. It's about building a better system from scratch, one that is cleaner, cheaper, and more resilient. Africa is leapfrogging the fossil fuel era. Just like it skipped landline phones and moved straight to mobile, it's now skipping gas stations and centralized power grids to embrace self-sufficient mobility. If scaled globally, this could signal the end of Tesla's dominance and the beginning of a new era where innovation doesn't come from Silicon Valley, but from places the world has long overlooked. While Elon Musk was launching satellites and tweeting about Mars, something extraordinary was happening in the shadows. Maxwell Chikumbutso, a self-taught inventor in Zimbabwe, might have just changed the rules of the game. His self-powered vehicle is more than just a cool invention. It's a symbol of what happens when necessity meets ingenuity. Africa, once dismissed in global tech circles, is now positioned to lead the future of sustainable transportation. And the question is no longer if this technology will disrupt the world, it's when. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Are we witnessing the next great shift in mobility? Or are we underestimating Africa once again?